Hi, this is Madeline from Sonic Bloom with a new episode in the Able and Life Insider Tips. And this tutorial I'm making because I realized that it's still necessary to say this over and over. Um, this is a question that has popped up over and over. What warp mode do people use as the default? And um, I've recently seen this again in an Ableton Facebook group and about half of the people said they used complex and that is actually a terrible idea. But the problem is, even though it's in a manual, most people don't read the manual or don't read as far, so I'm gonna explain it here. What th is this about? When we go into the preferences, we can go to re record warp launch and here we can set a default default warp mode and by default if you haven't changed anything it's set to beats and personally after trying different ones this is the one I settled on as well so this is actually not a bad idea and we have other options so beats as the name suggests is good for beats and percussion quite often tones is for anything that's melodic textures for anything that's more harmonic and repitch works more like on turntables when you change the speed so the pitch changes and then there's complex so complex is for anything that isn't just melodic material anything but like complete tracks with you know beats and melodies and harmonies all in one okay so as I said, I would suggest to keep it on beats because that's actually not a bad idea because it works most of the time and as long as you don't warp anything, it doesn't matter anyways. It does matter though when you use the complex or complex pro modes. And it actually says that in the manual. Here it says on page 734, the algorithms used in the complex and complex pro warp modes use an entirely different technology from the algorithms behind beats, tones, texture and repitch modes. Although the complex mode may sound better, particularly when used with mixed sound files containing many different kinds of audio material, they are never neutral, not even at the original tempo. And this is the most important part. Because of this, and because of the increased CPU demands of these algorithms, we recommend using them only in cases where the other warp modes don't produce sufficient results. I've tried that before, for example, on my Ari and Bira, and I was and it, I, did, I hadn't added any warp markers. It was just warped and looped, and that was it. Nothing stretched, and. Um, it sounded different. It uh, doesn't necessarily sa sound different for everything, but in some cases uh, it mi might sound a little bit more muddy and I've been wondering if that may not be one of the reasons why there's the, the myth that the audio engine of Ableton Live is just not as good as other DAWs. Well, I hope you found this helpful and don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!